I'm Joel Harrison. I'm a marketing and messaging consultant for nonprofits and social enterprises. And obviously, you've heard it a thousand times and you're probably using it. It has been changing people's workflows and, and lives for the last little while now. And for good reason too, right? We look at some of the benefits. We're looking at saving time, doing more with less. Obviously, as nonprofits, we're, we're always trying to squeeze as much as, as we can out of the time that we have. And we also want to improve quality of communications and generate more ideas and more content. And there's so many ways that you can use AI in your communication specifically, whether it's email drafts, article drafts, website copy, creating presentations, outlines. One of the best ways that I've liked to use AI is to eliminate the blank page anxiety. So whenever you come to that new piece of content or that new email that you're trying to create, there's always that hesitation of like, where do I start? And when you use AI, ChatGPT, or any of these other kind of models, um, it can eliminate that. And so there's so many benefits uh, to using AI, and I'm glad that lots of people are diving into it. But there's also concerns to watch for, right? Especially when we think about um, nonprofit and civil, civil society context. Um, issues can come up with copyright and plagiarism, accuracy of information, missing context and cultural nuance. You can also end up with repetitive content when different people are using the similar types of responses from some of these AI programs. And what we want to do is be cautious, careful, and be able to move forward in a way that gives us confidence in the way that we're moving forward. And we're not going to accidentally slide into some of these concern areas, right? And so what I wanted to talk about today was three rules for using AI for your nonprofit comms that can help frame just how you think about it, how you approach it in a little bit of a different way so that we can help avoid some of these potential concerns in the future as AI continues to take over some of our workflows. So rule number one, let AI help you with everything, but don't make it do everything for you. So when we think about how it's elevating our processes and our methods, everything from research drafting outlines to editing and publishing it can do a lot in a lot of these different areas but what i would encourage is that we don't offload the work to ai we let ai help us do the work so that we still have oversight over these different parts of the process and that we're not essentially taking a copy pasted answer from one of these ai programs and putting that into our communications and so if we think about it as AI is helping us through this process as opposed to AI is doing this for me, it can be a kind of a smoother introduction to using some of these tools in your communications. Rule number two, treat AI as a junior staff member. And what I mean by this is that we so often look at AI as the expert, the, the all-knowing, omniscient uh, being that is going to bestow its wisdom on us and ele elevate everything that we do. Uh, and the biggest risk of this is that we start getting lazy and we start giving ownership, we start passing off ownership to an entity that doesn't necessarily deserve it. And so if we treat AI as more of a junior staff member, it means that we're going to actually retain ownership of what we're creating. We're going to have that human oversight and be able to validate and add context because when you have a junior staff member, they usually don't have all of the context. They don't have the specific nuance. They don't have the sensitivities that we might need in nonprofit comms. And we need to treat AI in the same kind of way. Which brings us to rule number three, don't let AI decide, you decide. So it's an extension on what I was just talking about in that there's so much that AI can do, but when it comes to a lot of our foundational communications, brand messaging, website messaging, we need to make sure that we're not, one, accidentally letting AI decide by just taking the first thing that it gives to us in our communications, or we're not intentionally letting it decide and saying, hey, what is the best way to do this? And then just going with whatever answer is provided. So I would suggest that when we're moving forward to using more AI in our communications, that we're still retaining our human control. We're still being the center, center point of that communication as humans, as people with context in whatever we create, but use AI to help you do that. If you'd like to uh, chat more about it or, or talk with me, uh, you can reach me, my email or website here. I'll put my LinkedIn in the chat as well. Thank you.